to continue with the transformer in the last session we have uh, discussed with the column derivation and constraint how do we replace the transformer with the uh, another stages such all information we have seen and uh, today i'll just remove one of the output link in this session and i'm going to place only one output and i'm going to remove all the columns list of the columns i want to just uh, make sure of one column so without one column mapping to the target you cannot uh, work with transformer you should have at least one column from the source okay uh, we'll go through stage variables and uh, loop conditions in the coming sessions in this session i just want to create one new column first and for example i just want to name it as okay i'll uh, add it uh, i'll add a new column append a new column so here i just want to go through the ds macros the ds macros that we have these all like uh, are useful for creating an audit column audit table not column audit table we'll see how we are going to work with uh, ds macros so my first column is ds host name and the next column i am going to take as the ds macro which is job controller and uh, we'll place that and next we are going to take <coughs> i'm sorry job invocation id so when i am discussing with the invocation id uh, a small topic is pending i'll just discuss that even in this session <coughs> when do we go for the invocation id and all we'll discuss so ds job name and after the job name job start date time and uh, after time we have time stamp and here we will uh, discuss with the difference of time stamp and time and the date value what values are going to populate we'll see all together in ds macros so view number so total how many macros we have we'll see now the project name okay so total 10 columns i have taken and which is one is from the source emp number and remaining all i created a with a column with a derivation of a host names so total one column I expect and remaining all are my ds macros so ds macros uh, in the sense now how many are there total 9 total 9 now i'm going to run this job with this ds macros and i just want to make and one more thing here i'll want to discuss how to populate how to populate all data types at a time see propagates i'm just propagating sql type i have i'll just make it as varchar and go to the properties that we have seen before now choose the sql type propagate values the sql type i want to make it into it is in char i just want to make it into var char So, SQL type. I want to make it into. Okay. So, it is asking 
this all list of columns are going to convert into where care do you want to continue okay so if i have like 50 or 60 columns if i individually want to change the data type it may take a time certain time to complete uh, individually if you do so in that case you can propagate the values in this way okay so this is one of the best way to propagate the data types and some other values even you have those all values you can pop pop propagate at once so that is your propagate values option in any stage you can do this at the source level you can do at the target level you can do any particular stage you can do or or okay so job compiled successfully i'm not creating multiple jobs I got the 14 records into the output. Okay. So I'll just try to view the data. My jobs will be less. The number of jobs will be less, but the discussion of each and every stage will be more. Within the job itself, we'll discuss multiple concepts of that particular stage. Okay. So here are my, here are my DS macro. DS data stage macros. Okay, fine. So I'm going to discuss some points here in this run, and uh, after this run, we'll discuss with some other points. Okay, see the DS host name. What is meant by host name? Host name is nothing but your server name. When you try to log in into data stage, it will ask the host name host name so this is your host name 9080 is your port id so that is a different one but the host name is the server name so that is the reason see here the host name in the sense you get your server name so my server within my machine i have my computer as server so i got this number name as my host name but in real time your laptop or your desktop will be different and you connect to a server and that server is like your host name. Okay. So you find the difference. And job controller. What is this job controller? Controller means what? You need to control. Uh, this job, if it is dependent with any other job, the, the job, this job is a dependent job. And before to this, which job you are running, that is your controlling this, this current job. So how the value will be propagated into that uh, controller means in job control tab, you can add the jobs which are dependent. But as of now, I don't have any dependent to this job. Dependent means when you use the data set, and when you are creating a data set in the previous job, and that data you are taking, uh, into the second job, the next job, then the job one would be a dependent job. I'm sorry, job one is a uh, job two is the control uh, dependent job two, job one. So job one controls the job two, means once you complete the job one successfully, then only the job two will run. So this is possible mostly, and this is uh, this concept is mostly done through data set using data set so when you create a target as a data set and in the second job in the first job you create a data set target and in the second job data set would be the source so in that case is only the dependent jobs will be presented so to list out those control jobs means for this current job if you want uh, to list out what all this job is controlled with the, the job names in a job controller host name, DS job control host name, then you need to add in the properties tab, this job control tab, you need to go and add those jobs here. So those job list names will be present in this host name. So that is your DS job controller, DS job controller. And uh, after the DS job controller, there is a concept of innovation ID, DS innovation ID, and uh, which are blank, leave it now. 
I will talk about it after completion of the rest of DS macros exposition. You see DS job name. So the transformer stage underscore job 17. I, I see that job, this job name is defined by us, right? I have given the job name. I have defined this job name, correct or not? So this is my job name. And when this job start date, when did it start it? That is your date value. Start date is date value. And the time, this is date and this is time. And timestamp is with date plus timestamp, time. Date plus with time, that is your timestamp. Date plus time is your timestamp. And wave number is a unique number for every job. This GI level, we cannot, we don't use this wave number. This is a unique one. Normally in a, a command line, we can use this. And DS project name, I again, I just want to go to the home page or like login page. The project is your Ravana and this is your server host. And this is in that server, this is your project name. So that's what it listed the project name as Ravana. Listed as Ravana. So these are the macros that we have and the innovation ID is pending. I'll just show you the innovation ID. Hello multi instance. First of all, what is this hello multi instance and when do you go for this instance? For example, I have a business throughout old world. I have a business throughout old world. For example, I have Hyderabad, Bangalore, Chennai, my business in Chennai and Mumbai and I'm taking another uh, state as uh, state or uh, metropolitan city metropolitan city as yes. Bangalore I have taken Hyderabad Chennai and uh, uh, for example Trivandra and uh, Pune that is another one and uh, some other states so, uh, some other places we have for example and throughout worldwide and this is only in India I'm giving okay but if, you, if I take if I take like this my business only for these cities for example these cities in India I have the same business in these all areas for example Hyderabad, Bangalore, Chennai seven cities I have listed out but maybe in any other states even I have and uh, places even I have. Okay, the data is coming in all these different cities. Okay, there are different files. In this example, I have seven files, seven source files. I'm getting the data. Okay, now how can I move this data to the target? Should I create seven different jobs? to load this data into one particular target or can I create a single job? Yes, I can create single job and I can load. But the problem is, for example, if I am, if I am running these seven files in a single job, if I'm getting an error, I just want to know in which file I got the error. It should be very clear. I mean to say, I have seven different files. So in the director, I want to create seven different logs. Means seven individual log for seven different files. So that what kind of data or whatever the issues we get into, I can identify easily in which file you got the issue and in which concept you got the problem and what kind of problem is it and you are getting the same problem with all the cities or only particular that city i can get easily information see till now i'm running this job i have run as in the last session even i have run this job and in this in this session even i'm running this job multiple times when i run i have only transformer job as 
only one stands for job as only one for example if i want to say i'm not taking multiple sources but i'm just making hello intense uh, instance as uh, and i'm checking that but before to that i'll just try to tell you one thing that is see what run job run run page when i click on run you see this is your run page if you have parameters you will have a parameters tab you over here correct or not limits general tab i have i don't have anything else but once if i choose the hello multi instance and click okay and try to compile and try to run what will happen see the invocation id of course the parameters tab it is created and invocation id is is it is asking to create invocation ID. for example if i am running for uh, first time hyderabad file i click on run so what will happen see in the back end or in the log it is going to create a new log for only hyderabad file view the log you see some warning okay when i run with file hyderabad i have an issue i have an issue next i want to run for bangalore the same job i am running for multiple files it will pick only i only bangalore file how can we define that is through parameters okay so when i click on run again it the same job is running but now the log is bangalore multi instance so for single job you are using for multiple files you are running for multiple files and you are want to get a multiple log information so in that case we go for hello multi instance option and in that case you get the different logs so this is your multi instance concept and invocation id now the last run the last run i ran with what bangalore now go ahead and see the log in the invocation id you get bangalore information you get invocation id as bangalore see and before when i ran for hyderabad hyd it will get hyd so it will override so this is your invocation id ds invocation id macro and ds job name which will give you the job name into your ds job name and start date time time stamp time stamp difference is start date and time is your time stamp wave number is one of your unique name and the project name is the ravana the login page when you see we get that project so these are your macros if someone ask you how many macros in transformer we have nine one of the interview question may be like this and have you implemented any audit table yes we can create an audit table using this ds macros okay so this is the concept of ds macros in the transformer and i want to stop here and in the next sessions we will discuss with the rest of the remaining concepts like maybe we may go with system variables because ds routine i'll tell you what is the usage of ds routine and after that we go for system variable and next we go for functions okay so next after completion of that maybe we we'll go for stage variables and next to that we will go for loop variables and in the stage variables we will see one scenario and in the loop variables we have a scenario and that too is an interview scenario which is very important and a complex scenario that we have and all together we will complete a transformer okay with that we will complete the transformer and uh, next we will go for change capture again the type to implementation and uh, then also we see the transformer and in that case we will see what is your circuit key tab and how do you call them uh, with the database level and all those all information we see here okay so thanks for your time and thanks for watching this video and uh, that's it thanks for your time and see you in the next session thank you very much